Okay. Um, I think this uh, message from Subhashish Singra, Singrayan. Subhashish um, is not part of the WhatsApp group, so probably um, someone can just help him uh, and add him to the WhatsApp group, students' WhatsApp group. So he'll also be part of the discussions. And yeah. Okay, let's pray and then we'll get started, right? Let's, uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for, that you are with us. Thank you, Lord, that you are leading us, guiding us, um, speaking to us. Lord, we, we just pray that we'll continue to sharpen our um, uh, hearing, oh God, that whatever is uh, coming as a hindrance, Lord, between us and you, Lord, I pray that uh, it'll be removed. Um, Father God, I just pray that, um, Lord, that um, that we will even remove that mindset that we cannot hear from you. Uh, for you have said, Lord, that we are your sheep and the sheep have the privilege of hearing the shepherd's voice. And so, Lord, in um, in everything, Father God, I pray that um, we will continue to seek you, pursue you, God, seek your face. And, um, and, Lord, I pray that there will always be a rich deposit of your word in our hearts, Lord, that, uh, that may be quickened by, this, by your spirit and um, to our understanding. And uh, I just pray, Father God, that you'll speak to us in, in amazing, the various ways that we've been, Lord, learning. And uh, I pray that we will grow in our understanding in this manner also, Father God. And uh, thank you, Master. Thank you for uh, always uh, being with us and always there for us, Lord. And uh, thank you, God, that we can just turn to you and look to you and call upon your name uh, anytime we want to, God, and anytime there is a need. Um, and I just pray that, um, I pray this morning that we will, we will look to you first, Lord. Uh, we will look to you first that our hearts might be settled, um, that you will speak your peace. Um, and then, Father God, that as you lead us, that we will uh, be led by you to, Lord, uh, to do what needs to be done, Father God. Whether it's when it's challenging times, when it's uh, Lord, uh, when it's uh, a crisis or anything, God, that uh, you have the answers and you're the one who leads us. And so, God, we pray that we will discipline ourselves to seek you, seek your face, God, at all times, God. We thank you. We commit these sessions into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for putting up that link. Okay. Let's uh, let's start with uh, where we uh, stopped last class. Last class, we uh, we completed chapter eight. Right. Uh, we completed chapter eight, which is. Uh, 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 the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life, and we looked at several uh, several um, uh, topics under that, um, and the manner in which the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, uh, works in a believer's life, and uh, and the wonderful thing is that he, um, you know, he speaks to us, and we have the privilege of hearing his voice. Right. Um, today, uh, from today, uh, and maybe for a few weeks, we will look at uh, um, chapter nine and. Uh, you know the chapters following that, which is about the work of the Holy, more about the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, starting with the baptism with the Holy Spirit or baptism in the Holy Spirit, um, and also going on to uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and uh, because the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, when we when we study the objective and the reason for which um, the the Lord invites uh, and opens up. Uh, the life of the believer for this, um, we see that the objective is to clothe the believer with power for the work of ministry. And one of the ways uh, through which uh, the expression uh, of God's power or God expresses his power is through the release of the gifts of the spirit, which is um, you know, the, uh, the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit, which is a display of God's power, right? God's miraculous power, God's transformative power in people's lives. So, um, so we're going to be spending some time looking at or uh, studying the gifts, um, and uh, we will go, you know, we will, we will look at uh, the gifts of the spirit, which are listed in 1 Corinthians 12, and we will look at each one of them and how the, uh, you know, how to identify and how to move in it. And so, so it's all, a, you know, very exciting and also, a very practical uh, sessions right so um, so starting with you know hearing the voice of the spirit 
um, just want to encourage uh, all of us to um, to go, you know once the class is over and maybe in your quiet times to step in faith and practice it and practice what we are learning um, to receive uh, what we are uh, learning and uh, receive by faith from God. Right. Um, so it's uh, it's 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 going to be a, a lot of practical things from now on. So I uh, just want to encourage all of us to be um, to truly really jump in. Right. Uh, enter into it. Uh, right. Okay, so let's look at uh, chapter nine, um, baptism in the Holy Spirit. And uh, from now on, we'll, we will also use um, the APC publication, uh, Pascal's book, um, which is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So um, you could download that and keep it handy. What I will do is after the session, I will also put the link, uh, you know, or maybe put the PDF in the uh, in our resources tab, so you can download that as well. Okay, so. Um, Okay, for today's class, maybe I'll just project it so you can follow it. Um, let's uh, see. Um, mm -hmm. Just one second, I'm just getting the hang of it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you've got that, right? So um, we're looking at uh, you know the baptism in the Holy Spirit or baptism of the Holy Spirit, baptism with the Holy Spirit. Um, so the first thing to um, okay, can you? Oops, just a minute. Okay, has the display changed? Um, okay, just a minute, please. I'm not sure what happened. Um, Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sometimes this. Uh... Okay, here we go. Okay, so um, has that has that come on? Okay, okay yes. Okay, so let's look at. Um, uh, you can just follow through in the screen or in your notes. Um, so we see this whole thing of baptism. And John the Baptist, we know, came baptizing, baptizing people in water, and he also made a very, um, uh, you know, very uh, specific reference to baptism, uh, the kind of baptism that he is uh, involved in, and the kind of baptism that uh, the Lord Jesus will introduce uh, to the people. Okay, so uh, we see that in Matthew chapter three, verses eleven and twelve. Um, let, let me just read that scripture. Um, it is there on the screen. I will, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And then verse 12, his uh, winnowing fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Okay. So one thing to uh, first, firstly, uh, for us to understand is that uh, he's saying that uh, he's baptizing with water, and it's a, it's a symbolic, uh, uh, you know, something that uh, uh, symbolizes people's repentance. Uh, but he's referring to the Lord Jesus, um, and he's saying he is coming after me is mightier, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the word baptize. It actually means to uh, to immerse completely. Uh, let me just uh, uh, okay. It it means to um, to dip or to immerse, and it was a term which was used by um, in in uh, by the people who were actually doing the uh, dyeing of fabric. Right, so something is immersed completely, and and the color or the dye uh, fastens onto the fabric and. Uh, completely changes, right? It, it's immersed completely. So that is what it means. To baptizo means to immerse completely. So um, completely covered or fully surrounded uh, and uh, uh, immersed. 
right? So now, um, so the John says that the Lord Jesus will do this. He will baptize you. He will immerse you, um, surround you, uh, maybe fill you uh, with the Holy Spirit and uh, uh, with the Holy Spirit and fire. Okay. So um, the you would have heard, you know, many terms, uh, many people using the word terms, uh, baptized with the Holy Spirit or baptized in the Holy Spirit. Okay, and and both are correct because the the Greek rendition of that word with is uh, it, it can be translated as in or with or of um, and so on. So uh, baptized with or baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, it both are correct so um so you know if anybody asks that question you know this is actually not true um then you could answer you know this is uh, you know the, the greek word with is translated in these ways so so both are correct right baptism with the holy spirit and baptism in the holy spirit okay so john um uh, uh referred to the lord jesus and he said that uh, the lord jesus will come and he will baptize with the holy spirit Okay, so in the teachings of the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus makes this reference in Luke chapter 24. Okay, Luke chapter 24, verses 48 and 49. Um, the Lord Jesus says, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Okay, so... Um, just want you to um, look at that phrase promise of my father okay um, it says uh, to his disciples you wait in jerusalem i'm sending the promise of my father um, and you wait in jerusalem till you are endued or clothed uh, or covered that's the word endued uh, meaning of the word endued till you are endued with power from on high okay and in acts chapter one verses 4 to 5 and also in verse 8, um, he repeats that instruction. We see that instruction being, uh, uh, you know, uh, repeated there. Um, and and Luke has captured that, right? Uh, and he says, verse 4, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. Okay, so I'm, I'm sorry, it, it, it could have, may have been repeated, but it's, it's uh, definitely written there uh, for us um, by Luke. Right? So uh, this is, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Okay, so it is a repetition. Um, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Okay, so... Um, Again, referring to John's instruction of uh, John himself said said this that I baptize with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So here, the Lord Jesus is saying that uh, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. But it's different from John's baptism, which is baptism of water. Um, verse eight: But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Okay, so um, he asks them to wait, gives them specific instruction, and he says, you will receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now in the book of Acts, we see uh, five instances of, uh, of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, five, uh, uh, five very distinguishable instances that we see there. And we let's look at that. And then uh, maybe we have some questions. We'll take that also. Okay, so let's look at the first instance, okay, which is Acts chapter 2 and verses 1 to 4. Um, Acts 2. Okay. When the day of Pentecost has had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak uh, with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So there were about 120 disciples, and they were 
baptized. And this happened on the day of Pentecost. Okay, so uh, the day of Pentecost being um, you know after uh, 50 days after the uh, day, uh, feast of the first fruits, the feast of the Pentecost. So um, the day of the Pentecost uh, had arrived, and on that day this happened. Right, so they were filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, Acts chapter one and verse five, um, the Lord Jesus says, "You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now." And uh, Acts chapter two and verse four. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. So we see that being baptized and being filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, the same usage for this, um, this whole uh, uh, thing of baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. The other thing that we notice here is that they spoke with other tongues. They began to speak with other tongues or um, you know, other languages. Right, uh, and this these words were given by the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's what verse four says. That as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, so the words for this language was given by the Spirit. It's not something that they naturally learned uh, grammar and and syntax and and alphabets and so on. They did not learn it that way. It was actually them speaking, but the Spirit of God giving them the utterance um, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. And um, something that we notice here is that it this produced uh, varied reactions. Okay, we look at Acts chapter two and verse twelve. Um, verse uh, uh, okay, maybe we, we should just read from verse uh, nine onwards. Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, uh, Pontus. Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya joining Syrian visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, uh, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So these were the people groups which had gathered, and they heard them. Uh, uh, heard, heard the disciples after this experience of baptism of the Holy Spirit. They heard the disciples speaking in their language okay and uh, they were declaring the wonderful words of god wonderful works of god sorry verse 12 says they were all amazed they were perplexed okay they were amazed that something like this could happen they were perplexed which means they're troubled saying hey uh I, because we, they can't explain this how what, how did this happen how what could this mean and there were others verse 13 they were mocking them saying they are full of new wine which means that this uh, what they did, how they spoke, seemed like they were, you know, they were saying something, and uh, it seemed like uh, if people who were drunk would, you know, blabber. Okay, so there were these languages which they could identify and say, "Hey, um, you know, this this is my language," and they are actually declaring the words of God. But there were others who also were mocking, saying they were new, uh, they were, you know, they were drunk because. They could not make out, they could not understand what they were saying. Okay, so, uh, and following that, uh, Peter stands and then he he makes a reference to uh, the prophet Joel. He says, you know, um, in verse 14, he stands up and he says, men of Judea, you know, they are not drunk and it's, it's, it's in the morning, uh, nine o'clock or so, it is not drunk, we are not drunk. And uh, this is what was prophesied by prophet Joel, okay, what did what did uh, he's and he quotes that verse, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. Okay, so um, so we see. Um, uh, uh, the, the prophet Joel saying that there would be uh, this supernatural phenomenon of God pouring out his spirit on on people and that they would prophesy, there would be dreams, there would be visions. Um, but actually, when we, when we look at Acts chapter 2, we see, uh, we don't see that prophecy or dreams or visions mentioned, but we see something supernatural. There was the sound of a rushing wind, then there were tongues of fire, and this supernatural 
uh, release of this language. So we see this. Um, but you know, Peter very categorically states that you know, this is what was prophesied by Prophet Joel, and uh, this is what this is uh, this is what was spoken, right? So which means that uh, yes, we know that this is the outpouring of the Spirit, the Spirit being poured out and something supernatural happening uh, but it is the same holy spirit at work and the manifestation like the expression of the holy spirit you know it's it's varied it's different and but we know it, it is the same holy spirit and we see that many people were saved that day right thousands three thousand were saved that day uh, at the end of it um Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. And uh, uh, and this is what Peter says. Peter says, repent, because they before that they ask, you know, brothers, tell us what should we do. They were convicted in their hearts after Peter's uh, sermon. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is to you and to your children and all who are afar off, afar off, as many as are, as the Lord our God will call. Okay, so he says, repent, uh, let your sins be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So whatever they had received or they had experienced, the baptism the infilling of the Holy Spirit. He said, this is prom this promises to you. You will receive the same, and not only to you, but to, you know, to your children and to those who would uh, call upon the name of the Lord. So they would also receive forgiveness when they, when they call upon uh, the Lord, when they, when they call upon him in repentance. They would also receive forgiveness, and they would also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So whatever we experience, they will also experience as well. And, you know, we should always remember the objective of uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, uh, is uh, as defined, you know, as stated by the Lord Jesus. So that you would be endued with power and you would be witnesses, right? So that is the objective, nothing else, right? And so we see this. First instance, the church, the early church, um, the disciples, uh, all the and uh, you know about 120 of them, and they are filled with the spirit. Okay, and the supernatural phenomenon of uh, praying in other, I mean speaking in other tongues. Right? Okay, then we we turn to Acts chapter eight. Acts chapter eight, we see another instance. In uh, when we see, look at Acts, Acts chapter eight. Now this happened uh, after the death of Stephen. Okay. Stephen, as one of the uh, young men uh, who were chosen to take care of the administrative duty of um, distribution of food uh, for the widows, right? one of the seven, and now he is martyred. Okay. And after his death, uh, there is widespread persecution of the church, and, uh, and we, we see Saul being introduced there. Right, Saul, he's making havoc of the church. He's uh, persecuting the church, and and the believers from uh, Jerusalem they get scattered. They run for their lives because of the persecution. They go to neighboring places and so on. And Philip, we read about Philip going to Samaria, and uh, he goes to Samaria. He preaches Christ, and many are saved. And uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, you know wonderful things that happen. Unclean spirits come out. The, the people who are paralyzed and lame were healed, and then there's great joy in the city. Verse 8, Acts 8, verse 8, there's great joy in the city. Okay, so then what happens is um, people in Jerusalem get to hear that people in Samaria uh, have received the gospel. Okay, so uh, and they have, uh, and, uh, and one of these wonderful things are happening. So in verse 12, we see this. Um, but when they believed Philip, as they preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of uh, Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. So they were baptized, meaning they were baptized in water. Now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Okay, so um, here are these disciples in a group of believers in Jerusalem. 
who are giving leadership through the church. They heard, here's Samaria, there are believers there. Peter and John, they are they're sending Peter and John. And Peter and John, they come. And the first thing that they do is that they pray that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. So we see that, um, you know, maybe that was a pattern in the early church that, you know, you lead men, you lead people to repentance, they receive Jesus, and you pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, because this is something that was instructed by the Lord, whom, you know, they themselves personally, uh, they were instructed, they received, and this was so that they would be clothed with power to be witnesses. So they felt that it was important, and they, uh, you know, they, uh, they did that. They, they came, they prayed that they may receive the Holy Spirit. Now, the thing is, they've already become believers, right? We know that. Uh, they've already received Christ. They've already been baptized in water. But Peter and John come and do this, right? Um, verse 16 says, For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, verse 17, then they laid hands on them. Um, that uh, laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Verse 18, very interesting. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hand, hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. So something happened, something supernatural happened when... Um, uh, when Peter and John, uh, sorry, uh, when uh, Peter and John, yeah, Peter and John laid hands and prayed, uh, something supernatural happened. It says here that uh, Simon noticed that, and he uh, he offered them money, saying that I even I want this. You know, I'm going to. I, can I offer you this money? Even I want this. That whenever I lay hands, that people will be baptized uh, with the Holy Spirit. Right. So we don't know what happened. You know, it's not clearly mentioned what happened, but it was something noticeable. Right. So uh, he, he saw uh, and it was something noticeable. But we can infer that they started, they also maybe started to speak in tongues. Like we can infer that, we can conclude that um, because that is what happened at the early uh, and accepted too. And uh, they prayed specifically that they may be anointed, uh, they may baptize with the Holy Spirit. And uh, we can infer that they probably started praying in tongues. We don't know, right? Okay, so those were two instances. Now we go to, on to the third one, which is in Acts chapter 9. Okay, so in Acts chapter 9, we read about Saul. Okay, we read about Saul, and he's on the way to Damascus. He has this encounter. With Jesus and the Lord says, you know, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then, you know, you know that conversation he has. Now he's completely blind and uh, the Lord gives him instruction that he should go and be in this place. So he goes and uh, three days, you know, he's uh, without sight. He is, he's, he's not eating or drinking, he's fasting. And uh, yeah, and when verse 10, we see that Ananias uh, has a vision. And God, the Lord sends Ananias to go, and uh, and specific instructions what he should do. Okay, so let's read. There was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, "Here I am, Lord." So the Lord said to him, "Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, and behold, he is praying." And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard, heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all who call on your name. So Ananias has doubts. So he's like, uh, you know, Lord, are you sure? You know, I've heard about this person. Uh, and and then, you know, this is what he does. But the Lord said to him, go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. 
And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we uh, again just want to remind us um, when we when we uh, looked at Acts chapter two, uh, Acts chapter one, verse five. You see the word word anoint or baptize. Sorry, baptize with the Holy Spirit. You'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter two. We saw that um, you know they were two and verse four. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. So here he's using the same same phrase be filled with the holy spirit right so he says um you know that you may receive your sight and be filled with the holy spirit immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales and he received his sight at once and he arose and was baptized okay so these are the two things that he prayed for ananias that you may receive your sight and be filled with the holy spirit and we see in verse 18, that he received his sight, something uh, fell from his eyes like scales. He received his sight, he could see, and he arose and was baptized. Okay, now here again, we don't uh, see any supernatural phenomenon, but it just scriptures just plainly mentions that he was baptized. Um, and uh, and then you know later he just goes on. Um, so did he speak in tongues? at that point we don't know okay because uh, we can of course we can say you know in the in the in acts chapter two it happened acts chapter eight probably it happened uh, here also maybe there could have been something we don't know but we do know that paul eventually prayed in tongues okay because when he writes to the corinthian church he talks about that he says he, he tells them he gives them instructions about you know what to do you know what not to do with regard to praying in tongues and he also mentions you know 1 Corinthians 14 he uh, verse 18 he says I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all okay so we know that eventually he started praying in tongues or maybe at that point itself he started praying in tongues because he testifies to the Corinthian church and he says I pray in tongues more than you all He's actually, you know, encouraging them um, and laying down certain things, do's and don'ts about, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, about praying in tongues, about prophesying, and so on. Okay, so that is the uh, that's the third instance. And then we look at one more, which is, uh, you know, you know, Acts chapter ten, and this involves Peter and the household of Cornelius. So uh, Peter goes to Cornelius' house. And he is ministering to them, right? He's speaking to them, um, and uh, they're all ready. And uh, you know, we know that uh, how uh, uh, Cornelius had an angelic visitation and and all that, right? So we see in Acts chapter ten, verse forty-four, as Peter was speaking these words, you know, he's talking about the Lord. Um, he's um, He's, uh, he's in a you know Gentile household, non-Jewish household, and he's and he's saying you know uh, God is not partial, and God sent his children, um, God sent uh, Jesus, and who came to pre you know uh, preaching peace and so on. He's the Lord. He's, he, as he is speaking these words, verse forty-four says that the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. Okay, uh, and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished. The Jews were there with him, and maybe Peter himself believed as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Okay, so the promise of the Father, the gift of the Spirit, where Peter says, right, the this gift of the Holy Spirit uh, is for you and your children and all those who call. So here. Um, it, it says that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, verse 46, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay. For they, uh, and what is 46 actually clarifies why, uh, why, do we, why is it mentioned that they received the gift of the Holy Spirit, which has been poured out? You know, why uh, can one make that statement? Verse 46, the proof is, the evidence is that they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then Peter answered, verse 47, can anyone forbid water 
that these should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. Okay, they have received the Holy Spirit just as we have, right? Uh, alluding to what happened in Acts chapter 2. And uh, he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Uh, so he, he's baptizing them in water. Right? They have received Jesus. They have received the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which has been poured out on them. And uh, Paul, Peter testifies and says, you know, these have been, you know, baptized. Um, these have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So, you know, let's complete the whole thing. You know, let's baptize them in water as well. So then they get baptized in water and he stays with them uh, for some time, so on, right? And he also testifies, Acts chapter 11, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, a, people are angry. People are, uh, um, you know, they are, they are angry with Peter. You know, they are, uh, why did you stay? And uh, you know, why did you go into a Gentile's house? And why can you? How can you fellowship with them? Because he stayed there, and it's uh, not according to Jewish customs um, to fellowship and to eat with them and to stay and so on. So they, um, so they ask. You know, Acts chapter eleven. Uh, so it says, Acts chapter 11 and verse 2, Peter came up to Jerusalem and those of the circumcision contended with him, you know, saying, you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them. And then verse 4, Peter explains. Okay, And in this explanation, uh, he again tells them, verse 15, um, as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as upon us at the beginning. Then I remember the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they became silent and they glorify God saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Okay, so suddenly eyes were open. They realized that, hey, this, this is not just for Jewish people. Um, this gift of salvation, this baptism of the Spirit is for, is for everyone, is for the, you know, everyone else also. So uh, then they make that connection and they say, you know, God has granted. Even though the Lord commissioned them saying, you know, you will go to all the nations, preach the gospel to every creature, teaching them. They, they thought, okay, it was, you know, for their uh, mind, it just meant the Jewish world, right? But here, they, that was one of the things. Their eyes were open. They said, yes, God has granted repentance to life to the Gentiles as well. And the interesting thing is that as they believed in Christ, as they believed in the Lord, they were baptized. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Or, you know, the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out on them. You know, all these usages uh, referring to the same thing. Okay? then. Uh, one more that we see, um, the fifth one, uh, the last one that is recorded in the book of Acts about the baptism is in Acts chapter, uh, yeah, Acts chapter 19. Okay, so this is about uh, the believers, what happened to the believers at Ephesus. Okay, so let's read this, Acts chapter 19, 1 to 7, right? And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that, they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about 12 in all. Okay, so here, um, again, the first thing, you know, just like how Peter and John, when they went to Samaria, they they just laid hands and prayed for the believers. Okay, um, we see Ananias doing that. Uh, are the Lord instructing Ananias to to pray for uh, Saul? Um, and here we see that 
as soon as he comes, he meets the disciples uh, in Ephesus. And the question he asks them is, uh, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And he clarifies to them because they, um, they were actually, you know, uh, baptized in water, just like how John, uh, uh, John had baptized them. So they, they, they only knew about that. So they were rebaptized uh, in the name of the Lord. And then Paul lay, lays hands on them. The Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Okay, so it says here the Holy Spirit came upon them. Okay, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, infilling of the Holy Spirit, the the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out. Uh, here it says the Holy Spirit came upon them. In in I think in Acts chapter eleven. Um, um, uh, it says uh, in yeah Acts chapter eleven uh, verse forty four right now as while Peter was speaking these words the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word you know you see these different uh, phrases so uh, it it need not put us off you know it is referring to the same thing the Holy Spirit fell the Holy Spirit came upon the Holy Spirit filled they were baptized it was poured out etc and uh, prophet joel saying that pour out the lord will pour out of his spirit on all flesh all referring to the same thing okay um, but we see that uh, paul coming here and uh, you know asking in ephesus you know uh, have you did you receive the holy spirit okay so which means that he was in the habit of, you know, he's traveling to all these places, um, uh, you know, uh, ministering there, planting churches, and so on. So, which means that Paul, you know, led people to Christ and prayed for them to receive um, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Right. So that 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 must have been the norm because this is the first thing that he asks here. So, um, so we see that the early church taught and led people uh, in this and right, what we call as the baptism of the holy spirit so um okay in these five instances we notice some things okay well, what are some things that we notice out of three out of these five three very clearly three instances three places it says that they spoke with tongues what are those three accepted to uh, the disciples that gathered Holy Spirit filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues. Um, the second instance that we see is that Cornelius' house, Peter is uh, ministering, the Holy Spirit falls upon them, and they speak in tongues. Um, the third instance we see church in Ephesus, um, I mean, the, the believers here in Ephesus, they prayed in tongues and something additional, they prayed in some tongues and prophesied. Okay, so um, and the other two instances, what are the other two instances? One is um, in Samaria, the other one about Saul. Okay, now Saul eventually prayed in tongues, so we can infer maybe that happened. Here, something supernatural happened that Philip, I mean, that, that the Simon the sorcerer saw that, and it was so clear, it was very very visible. What whatever happened, so he said, you know, I want to give you money, so that. Uh, I may also receive this gift because I want to lay hands and pray. Now, Simon the Sorcerer had you know, a different motive because everyone saw him, you know, before they came to Christ, they were actually, he used to astound them with the, you know, the black, black magic and, and everything. So they they used to refer to him as the great power of God, right? So, um, so he wanted to have, he wanted to have that influence again. So his motive was not right, but the fact is that he noticed there was something supernatural. So we can say, okay, maybe there was, you know, uh, it's safe to infer that there also there was praying in tongues happening. Okay, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So uh, other things um, that we can, uh, you know, we can infer is that uh, when we are baptized with the Spirit, the Lord Jesus says that you will be endured with power. Endured meaning surrounded, clothed. So we see that okay so we are endued with power because that's what the lord jesus said and we also receive the gifts um of the spirit okay? at least we see tongues and prophecy prophecy you know, happening so that so we also receive the gifts of the spirit 
Okay. Um, but the thing is that, um, uh, okay, we're going to learn about the GIFs uh, specifically and we're going to look at the details of that, right? Uh, the other thing that we can see is that uh, now the power of God, or the power of the Holy Spirit uh, and the supernatural work of the Holy Spirit is revealed or manifested, expressed through these gifts. Okay. When we study the gifts, we realize that okay, it's healing, miracles, the supernatural work of God. Now, these are expressed. The power of God is expressed through these gifts. So when the Lord Jesus says that you will be clothed in power, yes, um, you know that is, what, that is what is happening. And that power is expressed through these gifts. Okay. Um, and also we see what is common in all this is the gift of tongues. Okay. Now that seems to be the common uh, gift and uh, also seems to be you know, something that starts off with the other expression, expression of other gifts as well. Something like a key that opens or unlocks other things. Right. So we, now these are inferences, of course, right? we can infer that. Okay. We'll stop here and then we'll come back after the break um and continue maybe you have some questions we can uh, you know we'll take some okay there are some questions here already okay so um we'll we'll address those when we come back okay <laughs> 